Good evening, this is your instructor, Jennifer Adkins Gordeva, and I would like to tell you a little bit of something about, um, about creating a portfolio. The first thing you want to do is you want to open up Google. If you have a Gmail account already, then you are not going to open up Gmail, but you're going to open up a Google Apps. You're going to log in, sign in, and then open up Google Apps, click More, and go to Blogger. You sign in there using your Gmail account. And there you go. Now, I already have multiple um, uh, uh, portfolios in here. I want to show you with one of the sample portfolios that I have. I want to show you how to uh, add a post. But first, I want to show you how to create a blog. So I'm about to create a new blog. I click on new blog. I'm going to create a title. My title should include my last name in some way. We're going to pretend that my last name is Juniper, okay? Juniper's Portfolio. I know that this says that we're on a blog, but we're using the blog platform to create a portfolio. Juniper's Portfolio, Address. Anything that I put will end with blogspot.com. Therefore, I am going to um, type in Juniper's Juniper um, portfolio. Let's check and see if this one is available. Ah, it is available. So now I'm grabbing it up. I'm going to create a blog. And look, it's been created automatically. I don't want to find a domain. I'm going to click no thanks. Now that I'm in Blogger, I um, want to use Blogger as a platform for my, building my portfolio. I have Juniper's portfolio. I'm going to create my first post. Now, I've already opened a document that has my um, full essay in it. I'm going to put it into my portfolio. I click New Post. I go into my document. I control A for select all, control C for copy. And now I'm going to move to, into this post. I make sure my cursor is in the left, not in the center or the far right, because that will change the way that everything appears. So I'm going to put it in control V for um, paste. And I can see that there might have been something wrong with my with my first Word document. Let me go back and check it. I need to scroll down and check my Word document. Ah, yes. So over here, my margins were set all crazy. I want to fix that. So if something is wrong inside of my Word document, it's going to show up in here. I have to be on alert for this. Now I'm going to move, I'm going to fix my document by moving my items. Now, again, control A, control C. I'm returning to my document, control A, delete, and now control V, copy. This should work a lot better. Oh, it looks so much better. Because I know that it's my document and it is my portfolio, I can use the conventions of a blog. I can use the conventions of a portfolio. And I don't have to have this front page material that MLA prizes so much. When I look over at this, um, at this title, I think I'm going to call it subheading. And I will use subheading every time that I have a um, title of an essay. 
Now up here, um, I'm because it's my portfolio, I'm going to write um, sample essay, major project one. I can make all sorts of decisions right now about this title. I could change the um, change it from subheading to heading or to minor heading. I could change its size entirely. I'm going to keep it back at subheading because I had it there before. There we go. I can change its size entirely from normal to large. I can alter the font. I think I'm going to keep times there and I could bold it. I could also change the text color. I think I want to make all of my titles um, orange. Now I'm going to publish. All right. Now you can see where there was nothing before and now there's a list. Now I want to see what it looks like in real life. So I click on view blog while I'm in the screen. Ay, 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 it looks sharp. It sure does look sharp. I scroll down, everything looks right. Groovy. This is wonderful. Now, if you are completing portfolio checklist one, this meets the requirements to get eight out of 10 points. If you want to get 10 out of 10 points, Then you return to it, you edit it, and you are going to add an introduction here. Now, an introduction might be, um, this is a sample essay that was created to illustrate the appearance of an essay in a blog platform. Now, I suggest that you add that you plan on adding introductions to every one of your um, portfolio items throughout the semester. It's very simple to do. It's very quick to do. And if you do it consistently, it gets really, really easy. I'm going to make all of mine red, I think, and I'm going to choose a larger font size. And I update, and I can see my blog. There we go. Now, if I want to go in and I want to start playing around a lot. I can choose different themes. I've noticed that the usability changes with the themes. Um, they have different gadgets, different widgets, and you need to strike upon something that looks, looks good to you. I don't know that um, at this point you should worry too much about uh, uh, being able to add Im images in the back, but if you find a um, a theme in which you want to add an image, maybe perhaps some art that you've done yourself, then there are some easy ways to do that. For instance, you can customize any theme that you have and you'll, you'll find that you can um, sometimes have an, uh, a photograph that you can pop in behind something. It's important that you play around um, and start to get comfortable with it. Spend as much time as it's fun. I want to apply this to my blog. I kind of like this one. All right. And There we go. Now I'm going to click new post. And if I want extra bonus points, I can do that. Back to blogger.
This is how it looks on a phone device. This is how it looks on a computer. I can make edits. I can customize things. I can add posts, etc. Now, I would like for you to see some of the portfolios that we have available to us. You have this sample Composition 1 portfolio available to you. It is an example of a uh, Comp 1 portfolio. As you can see, it has an annotated bibliography. Um, this annotated bibliography is written in APA style. It has a, um, a multimodal project. It has a rhetorical analysis and another rhetorical analysis. All of these writings came from students who gave me permission to use them. There's a major project and so forth. Now you'll see that every one of these has a short intro. I don't think that this is quite enough of an intro. Plus there are some items missing. But by the end of the semester, you can imagine if you have an annotated bib and you have three projects, three writing projects, you have a substantial amount of, of work on your portfolio and you should be pretty proud of it. Let me show you one more example. So, uh, we'll go to this one. We'll view the blog. You can see this is Amber Nill. She has, um, but it's actually me. She has a final reflection, the reflection essay that she wrote for her piece. Um, she has her um, substantial uh, argument. Uh, she has a lengthy introduction. It's desirable. She has a rough draft of a rhetorical analysis and a rough draft and a full draft of a rhetorical analysis. And uh, she has a literacy narrative. So she's writing about these items inside of her final, pro, um, final reflection. And in her final reflection, um, she spends a lot of time talking about her process with with building that. You can expect that you'll be creating something like that. Now, one last thing. After you have built your blog, you need to turn in the link to it. I'm going to expand this page so that you can see where that link will be located. So if you were to click this, copy over this, it would not work for me. You would not be able to send me to that link. Instead, you want to go to view blog. Oh, pardon me. You want to go first. We want to first of all go to my sample. Uh, Juniper's portfolio. We want to go to view blog. And I need to capture this item up here. I scroll over all of it. Recognize that Juniper portfolio just 12 minutes ago whenever we created it. We control C and then you're going to go into Blackboard, click control V to turn in the portfolio link. So um, read your assignment sheet about uh, the portfolio checklist. Read the assignment for the portfolio checklist, turn it in in portfolio checklist one, and use this document as a key way to understand the steps for creating that. Here's your portfolio checklist one assignment sheet. Here is your document for how to create a portfolio using Google Blogger. The very bottom of the document, this gives you all, everything that you know. 
everything that you need to know is in here at the very bottom of the document. 